Uh, shifting uh, not far there from the floor, joining us now, American Conservative Union Chair Matt Schlapp. Uh, Matt, thank you so much for taking a few minutes out. I know you must be very, very busy down there. You've got you know, all these speakers lined up, and we've seen some warm reception uh, from not from not only uh, from from some of those that were also in the Trump administration and served under the former president as well. I just want to get your thoughts, uh, kind of a sense, a vibe uh, for how warmly received the former president will be when he speaks tomorrow. I think the fact that uh, Twitter and Facebook and other social media companies and media companies have tried to say that it's inappropriate for Donald Trump to have a voice or a future in politics has really bonded him even more to his supporters and to conservatives, including conservatives who didn't necessarily know if he was going to be a conservative president. But after four years, it was almost like eight years of accomplishment sma you know, smashed into four years. They are hungry to hear from Donald Trump. And, uh, and the big question is, what's he got to say? That certainly, you know, we've got a little bit of insight into what potentially uh, the president may say. John Roberts gave us uh, some hints. He had had some sources that gave him some idea. And you mentioned big tech. I guess there is some expectation that the former president will go after big tech. But also on the agenda, talking about uh, fellow Republicans, those perhaps uh, that have not been favorable to him in recent weeks, do you expect the, the former president to call out current Republican leadership? And do you think that that is good or bad for the Republican party because some have talked about the GOP as in as if it's in a civil war your thoughts yeah the civil war thing is kind of ridiculous I think um, I think it's better when politicians are honest and I think we've heard some from some Republicans who never really liked Donald Trump that much they were with him while he was president uh, when uh, when he's not president they've decided to say look I, I don't think he should play a role anymore but and that's honesty and I think Donald Trump should come to the CPAC stage and be equally honest it's fine to settle some scores. Uh, he doesn't. Uh, he hasn't been as uh, present in our life every couple of minutes on Twitter and on our TV as he was for five years. But I do think that he ought to spend the lion's share of this precious time that he's got talking about this coalition. He built the coalition. It was a movement unlike I've never seen in politics. And the elephant is part of that movement, but it's not necessarily even the biggest part of that movement. All these independent voices, a lot of conservatives who aren't necessarily registered Republicans, and we got to marshal this coalition to defeat these radical socialist policies that are coming our way. I mean, he's got a unique opportunity to tell us how we win on these policies, how we take back the House and the Senate, and push our agenda. Yeah, I think you touched on something. This is where I was going to go next, is what does Trump mean over the next two years heading into the midterms, over the next four years heading into another presidential election? Uh, who will the president, uh, will, who, will, who will the former president be to the Republican Party in the coming years? You know, there's that potential. Will he run again? Or will he be, in essence, you know, a kingmaker? Or has his power been diminished? Is this rift, as you mentioned, settling scores, uh, something that will harm the Republican Party? Where do you see... Uh, uh, the former president's influence going in the years ahead. The, the reason why Donald Trump captured the spirit of the overwhelming majority of Republicans and added all these new people is because he tells it like it is. He doesn't sugarcoat it. And, uh, and it was so unusual in politics. But uh, this whole question about what his role is going forward, put the shoe on the other foot. What's Barack Obama's role for the Democratic Party? He, there's no question he's the most important voice. His wife is probably the second most important voice. The Clintons have been, had very powerful voices within the Democratic Party. What happened on the Republican side is when our presidents were so destroyed and pilloried by the national media, by the time they were done with their presidencies, they just wanted to get off the stage. The difference with Donald Trump is, I don't know if he's going to run for president again, but he very may, may well. He is going to stay engaged, much like Clinton and Obama did. I think it's good for, the, for our Republican effort, for our conservative effort. And, uh, and I think it's strange that reporters are, are so surprised that he would stay engaged. Democrat presidents always stay engaged. Yeah, Matt Schlapp, thank you so much uh, for your insights. We appreciate it. Of course, the president speaking uh, tomorrow night, the big headliner of this event. No doubt whether a Republican agrees or disagree with him, I think there'll be a lot of people turning in uh, to see what he has to say. Matt Schlapp, thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your thank weekend you. as your event continues and begins to wrap you up. Thank you.